All right, we're finally there. Can you believe it? We're at the point where you get to start painting. Isn't that great? All right, let's talk about how to set up here for a moment. Um, below, I have the items you might want to consider using. Uh, so if you have a roll of masking tape, that might be handy off and on. Um, and here's the first thing you could do. Um, in your kits, you have a disposable palette, which you can just open up paint on and then tear the sheet off one at a time if, as you like. Those of you that don't have the kit or if you're still waiting on the kit to get started um, or if you want to just save a couple of bucks you can um, just go like this tear off uh, say four pieces of masking tape. Um, here I just have a white piece of cardboard that I found but really anything will work that's stiff um, and uh, a white piece of uh, a cardboard will work really well. Uh, it doesn't really matter though, but something kind of neutral is nice. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and I'm going to tape um, this wax paper, which you can pick up at the dollar store, or Albertsons, or where, really just about any uh, grocery store is going to carry it. I'm going to just tape that simply on the back of some kind of tight surface. Um, well, not necessarily tight, but some kind of hard surface uh, will work. And this is just a makeshift palette that we're working on right here. Okay, so just real quickly, um, you could then just paint right on this surface right here. And this will work just fine for you. And then um, when you're done, you can just unpeel that masking tape and save your cardboard and throw that away. And that will be your, your palette or your mixing surface. Okay, and additionally, uh, additionally uh, what I have is just a bucket of water. Uh, this bucket of water is just a plastic container from a, a thing of uh, nuts that we got at, at Costco. And the reason I mention that is just any kind of container that's plastic. If you end up with a glass one, it's like Murphy's Law. It's somehow it's going to be broken, unfortunately. It will fall over. Uh, the plastic ones uh, fare a lot better for that reason, okay? Uh, so keep that in mind, some kind of plastic container. Try to have something a little bit bigger than a Dixie cup if you can help it. You want something that's gonna hold a little bit of water. If you have a very small thing, it's gonna get contaminated over time and uh, you're not going to have as pure colors uh, as you're painting. A roll of Viva paper towels. I'll put a big shout out for Vivas. They're not available in your kit because they're cheaper at the grocery store. Though in this day and age, <laughs> they might be a little bit harder to get your hands on, but any kind of an old rag, old t-shirt, paper towels, um, napkins, things like that can help for cleanup. Um, but really use whatever you have, even if you collect your junk mail, uh, out of the mailbox, you can just keep your uh, uh, those advertisements and use those to, to, to clean off brushes and, and, and so on as you're working. Okay, I have two options here depending upon the kit or supplies that you might have ordered. Again, we're using acrylic in this class. I have one that's in a, in a tube and one version that is in a jar. And these are going to be the two most common options that you have out there. I'm just going to show you how to set those up. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo the cap on my on my tube here, and I'm going to squeeze out a pretty good portion of paint. Um, this is the biggest problem. Most students will skimp a little bit on paint, and they will not necessarily lay out enough paint. So don't be real skimpy, and especially on your black, and especially even more so on your white. You're going to end up using more white and black than you are on any other color. Uh, in your whole palette. So just to get started now though, all we're going to do is we're just going to work in black and white on this first shadow sphere. Um, and I'm just basically in this video showing you how to set up and giving you some ideas to set up. So you can work on your kitchen table. You can work uh, on a lawn chair out in the backyard or whatever if the weather permits. If you're inventive, you can get pretty creative. Um, what you could do is just take your easel and, I mean, sorry, without an easel, take your canvas and put it on a table and prop a couple books under it so you have a little bit of an angle and you could work on it from there. 
Um, but otherwise, uh, another option is if you have a sheet of glass around or an old picture frame, you can take that glass out and duct tape it to, to a board. In this case, I duct taped it to a wooden pallet. And uh, this way I can be more environmentally conscious and I can just scrape this down. And uh, I painted the back side of my glass white. And then I uh, have a nice mixing surface here. And over time, if I'm painting a lot and this duct tape gets worn out, I just remove it and I'm good to go. So that's another option for setting up a palette. I apologize if we were in the classroom, everybody would have a glass palette tabaret uh, in the classroom um, that's you know attached to a little table. Tabaret is French for table. And I like it because it makes it sound so much more artsy, doesn't it? Like uh, the next thing we need is a monocle and a little red beret and we're there. But anyway, so that's kind of the setup I'm going to be demoing on today. Um, so I have the water. I have the brushes. I also wanted to show you what you do in a case like so if you have a jar. Um, so with the jar, you are going to need something to scoop it out. So a palette knife is really preferred um, but you could use like a plastic utensil or a chopstick or something like that too but a palette knife is really nice because you can rip off a towel or whatever you have to clean it off um, and you can use it over and over again now obviously you're going to need to clean this to keep your your paints from getting contaminated each time but that's what you do if you have the jar the advantage of the jar is if your paint is still wet at the end of your painting you can scoop it out and put it back in the in your jar if you like um, so it can be a little bit more economical um, but the downside of the tube is uh, you can't put the paint back in there but uh, the advantage is it's so much more user-friendly right so now I have my water my paper towels a mixing surface um, you're gonna have to get maybe semi inventive on where you're painting worst case scenario you could um, paint on the floor uh, and that's what they do in uh, places like Japan and Korea the artists actually prefer to paint down on the ground so if you're into yoga and you're flexible and you like sitting on the ground well that might be a you can paint Jackson Pollock style look him up if you don't know who he is uh, he'd paint directly with canvases uh, laying on the ground there so that is the setup, um, just, just a basic idea in terms of how to get started. Now, one thing I will mention with your brushes is the fact that you want to um, saturate your bristles first. So I'm gonna take my brushes in there and let them soak. Now notice they're long handled brushes, just like what we talked about uh, in the syllabus. Um, again, I understand everybody's on a budget. If you don't have that ability, that's okay. Um, the Snap brand by Princeton is a killer good deal. And they're at Tacoma Artists and Craftsmen and you find them online, they don't cost a lot and they're really surprisingly good. Um, these are some Utrecht brand brushes, these orange handled ones. And then the Grombacher Bristolettes, which I don't have uh, right here. Uh, right now. Well, I'll take it back. I have one behind me here. This is the Grombacher Bristolette brush. This is my favorite brush. It's built like a tank. Um, and this is the brush that comes in that uh, Dick Blick kit. So um, they're kind of expensive, but they'll last you forever and ever. Um, and these Princeton brushes for the money are easily the best, best brushes on the market. So, and I want to say that's what comes in the Tacoma Artist and Craftsman kit if I'm not mistaken, um, but um, I'm not exactly sure if they have curbside service at some point in time here. I'm filming this video uh, before the class starts and some things are still unknown. But anyway, those are just a few brush options. You can certainly Amazon some of those things too, if, if you need to. Um, but uh, before you start, what I was mentioning is you wanna pre-saturate your bristles like that so you can get them nice and wet and the reason you want to do that is because they'll clean out easier. So if you take a raw brush right into the paint and then you try to clean them out, uh, sadly, it's going to be harder for you to clean the brush. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing I'm going to mention is what I'm doing right here, I don't want to do long term. And that's leave my brushes submerged in the water. So the problem with that would be the fact that um, the, the ferrules on the brush here, this metal part, would start to rust and wear out. The hairs will start to seep out and um, 
Uh, the other thing that will happen is if you have um, brushes that are designed for uh, oil painting, they'll start to swell and, and fan out like that. So really what you want to look for are these synthetic fiber brushes and you want to stay away from the bristle brushes because those are not made to get in contact with water. They'll swell and fan out. Uh, those are made to only come in contact with things like linseed oil, mineral spirits, um, soft flower oil and the, and the like, okay? Uh, but anyway, these are just a couple of brushes. This is a simple setup. We're keeping it really simple here at first. All you need is some kind of mixing surface. Can be wax paper, could be uh, an old kitchen plate, um, could be an old glass uh, section from an, a mirror, something like that. I would recommend taping it to a surface so if it does break, uh, you don't have shards and things like that everywhere. So be kind of careful. This is just a thin sheet of plate glass that I, I, I uh, taped down. So that's going to be about it in terms of getting started. Um, here in this next video, I'm going to show you what your first assignment is and we'll take it from there. Um, Message me if you have any additional questions uh, in terms of setup. Now, as far as cleanup, what you're going to want to do is take most of the paint out of your brush with that paper towel or newspaper or whatever you have, okay, and pull most of that paint. So we can imagine it's time for me to clean up. I'm just going to grab a Viva. Oh, I love these Vivas. All right, so I'm going to grab a Viva. We'll imagine that this paintbrush here is really dirty. I'm going to go like this and pull out most of my paint out of the bris bristles of the hair, like, just like so. Remove that paint. Um, as far as the container of water, um, I, I would say if you can avoid sending that down your own drain, uh, maybe just dump it outside uh, somewhere where you feel it's safe. Or dump most of it outside and then use a paper towel to take the bigger clumps of paint out of the bottom and put those in the garbage can. If you are going to be pouring this in the sink, try to avoid just pouring all the acrylic right down your sink because there will eventually be clumps of paint in there and it's best not to send those down and plug up your drains or send them into the Puget Sound where we're killing fish, okay? So um, the thing is, just be mindful about how you're disposing of your water. It is just water, and as long as it's thinned out, you're going to be okay, but you don't want to be spent sending big clumps of paint down there. That's why I try to take the vast majority of the paint off my brushes using the paper towel. When I'm draining this water, I either empty it outside, or I um, am very careful about uh, just putting the thin parts down the sink and then wiping out the thicker parts. So. Um, the dollar store has great containers to pick from if you're looking for something uh, that just might work. If not, you might stumble across something at, at your house. So, um, Goodwill is also a friend sometimes for things like that, but it's pretty hard to beat the prices at the dollar store. Okay, um, I think that's going to get be enough to get you going on this first assignment. All right. Head on over to the next video and find out what we're doing and set up your paints and we're finally going to have fun. All right, here we go.